This week on the 77% Street Debate. The law currently says if you are 14 years and younger, you cannot consent to sex. That's statutory rape. My water broke at school. Your water broke when you were in school? Yes. Liberalized abortion in Namibia is a matter that needs the urgency of all the attention. I don't think uh, we as human beings have the right uh, to take life. Women should be given the choice. Hello and welcome to another episode of the 77%. This week we are in Fintuk in Namibia, more specifically in Havana, the informal settlement that you see behind me. And it's because statistically low-income countries are more likely to experience the problem of early pregnancies or teen pregnancies compared to high-income countries. And particularly in this area you can imagine that it's a serious problem. And that's why we're here and we want to find out why does this problem exist, what are the consequences and what can we do to put an end to it. Who better to answer this? questions for me than some Namibians and we're going to begin with by Grace she's actually looking very scared right now <laughs> but Hello. that's all right so by Grace you're a teen mom mm -hmm. and you made headlines here in Namibia because you actually got pregnant at the age of 14 mm -hmm. I can imagine that that was a very scary experience for you yes can you tell me what scary. happened my parents had like a funeral of my grandmother and they'd go like back and forth to the village they didn't know that I had a boyfriend that time but then when they found out that I had a boyfriend, that's when they started asking me questions like, did you start having sex and all of that. And then that's when I like um, became open with them. And then I told them that, yes, I've had sex and I didn't get my period for so long and all of that. And they decided that we should go for tests. So we went for the tests and then they came out positive. They were okay. They were made, obviously, but they were a bit accepting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the, th the knowing that... Um, I, they had, I had their bags, is what kept me going. Right. Uh -huh. uh, but what happened when you got the news, when you knew for yourself that, for sure, I don't have my period and it's very, very likely that I'm pregnant. What was going through your mind? Okay, um, I was, there was actually a time where I was depressed and I was doing, my scores at school were very weak. I also kind of thought about like having abortions and all of it. Like I had the thought of, having an abortion but I actually never like tried to maybe go to the shop or maybe look for something or go on or on the internet to search and all of that so yeah so the thought crossed your mind but you yeah, opted I against never, it mm -hmm. how old was your boyfriend at the time by the way he was 21 I think 21 so you mm -hmm. were a 14 year old dating a 21 year old yes. Uh, let me just come to Amore here for a second, because she's also a teen mom, albeit the fact that she got pregnant when you were 17, right? Yes. Did, did you also have an older boyfriend? And is it normal in Namibia to have somebody who's significantly older than you uh, as a boyfriend when you're a teenager? Yeah, I was having an older boyfriend. He was like 25. But the reason I took an older boyfriend was like the needs to support, you know, toiletries, those things. Yeah, that's why. So what are some of the things that your boyfriend was providing for you? Just explain to me, please. Dollar trees, stationaries for school. So your parents were not in a position to do this for you, I imagine. Yes. Um, okay, and so you figure out that you're pregnant. Is it scary for you when you find out or were you thinking, oh like, gosh, this I, is normal? I only found out when I was four months because I was like getting, still getting my period. And then like I was at school when my teacher, he wa it was a male teacher, he told me that my breasts are big and like he wanted to take me to the clinic. Mm -hmm. So I went with him to the hospital and then he called my parents. But then my parents said that I must move out of the house and go and stay with my boyfriend, the one that made me pregnant. So I had to move. Yeah. But then the guy was even denying when I told him that I'm pregnant. Yeah, he denied until the kid was after I gave birth, until she was eight months. That's the time he accepted the child yeah. because we went for a DNA. Okay, and have your parents taken you back in since that time? Yes. Okay. Um, let's come to Immaculate, who's on this side. She's a senior research fellow at the University of Namibia. And I just want to put things into context here. Is what we are hearing a familiar tale here in Namibia or in the larger African context? What do the figures say? Uh, teenage pregnancy is indeed a serious concern uh, globally. The Namibian government have what we call the uh, um, education monitoring information systems where annually the schools must be able to indicate what has happened to those learners who are not returning. Right. A significant number of the learners that are not coming back are actually 
due to pregnancy. Due to early pregnancy. And, and there you can see around 40%. 40%? For reasons why learners are not returning to school. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to speak to, where is he? West. Here he is. Uh, West is a traditional dancer. He would consider himself a traditionalist. You can see from his jewelry. But you also grew up in areas like this, you know, in formal settlements. And you're actually working with youth in these areas. Why is the rate of teen pregnancy so high? A lot of kids are being approached by adults or maybe bigger boys. Yeah. So this is also to get a, a, a fresh fruit from the beginning. Because there's also this leak of saying that... What, I, do you, what do you mean a fresh fruit? Fresh fruit is like, uh, let me say, there's, uh, guys are also proud of themselves and also doing the cabane amongst themselves and say that I'm proud of myself because I have been breaking maybe 15 girls or virgins or something like that. So it's, for us it's a joke wow. or maybe it's a, it's a fun thing. But there's even cases, girl children are booked for marriage before they're even born. So, I mean, explain uh, that to let, me. Let me just explain that. Mm -hmm. So, you will be married to a rich person for a benefit. Sometimes it means you are going to be a, a helping hand of that man. Oh, let me say on. sometimes. So, so helping sometimes, hand is, is coming like this. I think, I think we all know that it's almost expected that the girl will sleep with this old man. Yeah, but it, 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 it's almost like that. It's, it, it's also happening like that. Uh, I feel like you're almost romanticizing this, which I, I have a problem with. Let's come back to By Grace and Amore here, because I want to know the kind of sex education you received in school. I mean, by the time you're 14, what grade is that? I was in grade 7. Grade 7. So by mm -hmm. this time, teachers have already probably, is it in the school curriculum? What are you taught? Yeah, we were taught about sex, yes, that um, you should condomize and all of that. And yeah, family planning, you should mm. use family planning. And I did have knowledge, just there was just an accident that happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Amore? Were you aware of, you know, sex education, the possibilities of getting an early pregnancy and the consequences of that from school? Yes. Do you think it was enough? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for you, the, it would have happened either no, way? No, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. Yes. Okay, so when you, know, you hear the young girls here saying it was a mistake, but then the consequence is a child. By the way, this is Frida. I didn't introduce her, an activist here. What are some of the stories that you've heard from the people you're working with? Most girls that usually, um, let me say, fall pregnant, all the stories that I've met, are people from traditional aspects. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, you are taught to not sort of really refuse when a man approaches you because this man is older than you are. And in the end, this person ends up pregnant. This person ends up, even if they say that, no, I'm pregnant, they come to their elders. So what they did is they approached this uh, other family and said, no, if you are able to take care of this child for us, we will let it slide. Why are you literally swiping this whole thing under the mat? Because firstly, that other person is a perpetrator. Yeah. It's a, he's a rapist. You had sex with an underage child. That's rape. But these things are not spoken about. Sex is like, it's a bedroom grown-up kind of thing. But yet the grown-ups are the ones that are approaching these young kids because, hey, fresh meat is a virgin and you're going to boast about it. Okay, we'll come back to the aspect of tradition in just a second. But let mm -hmm. me introduce Simpson for a second here uh, because you're a father of four and you yes. identify as a born-again Christian. Yes. And so the question of having age-appropriate conversations around sex and sexuality but within the context of Christianity, is that happening? You, you get... Uh, teenage girls also getting falling pregnant in the church uh, but that does not say they, they, they are not informed or rather they don't get the education from 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 school sex education only comes in somewhere around 14 15 in schools as well but I think somewhere it needs to start from grassroots from home as well parents need to to, to encourage parents need to to, to, to be open about this kind of things to, to, to their daughters and say no. What about to their sons? Yeah, to their sons as well. To their sons as well. Teach them that uh, there is a way to live uh, uh, virtually right and that also a way to live morally right and to wait until one of the days that you will get married. Okay, let me come to Immaculate. Oh, I can see you're itching. Uh, I, 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 yes. Um, there's a notion that if that young boys are not implicated in teenage pregnancy, 
these, these that whole narrative. But yeah. they, they are. The education needs to deliberately target the young boy. They need to be as much part of the solution as they are part of the problem. Um, do you think that the education system is comprehensive enough when it comes to no, issues of sexual no, education? Not, not really, not really. We have, we have looked at the way how, the, the extent to which the teachers are comfortable in t talking about sex education to the, the, the learners. Mm -hmm. Majority of them are not even prepared to take on the conversation. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we need to step up a little in terms of the type of policies that we have in place. Namibia has an adolescent friendly health policy and the understanding there is that a 14, 15, 16 year old should be able to go into a health facility, find a queue that is separate from the other queues where family planning is taken and there should be a nurse who is well trained who will be able to give this youngster comprehensive health yeah. service, not just the injection or the pill or the loop. Okay. But it's not yet happening. Let's come back to Simpson then because it ties back to what you were saying earlier that the teachings for you as a Christian is abstinence until marriage. Don't you think that's a little misleading? I mean, people are having sex. Why don't you just give them access to contraceptives I mean, and the health care that they need? Yeah, uh, Edith, there is something, Simpson. They, they, there is something called uh, self-control. The Bible talks about self-control. A young girl being approached by a man or an older man, she has the right to say no. It all deals with dignity at the end of the day. I'm just curious, Simpson, because for you, it seems that the message is constantly targeted at the girl. Mm. The girl should be resisting. The girl should not fall into no, no, his no, hands. It's, it's, what about the man? Why can't he resist the urge to approach a younger girl? The way we as parents nurture and, and teach our, our children from, from, from home, plays a vital role in terms of when he becomes a 16 year old or 14 year old to be able to control to be able to respect that young lady that works there in the street to be able to see her as a sister to be able to see her as a mother moral yeah, values I mean, that he's we, growing we, up I, with. I think you and i could go back and forth on this mm -hmm. because the truth is that hormonally it is very normal to have sexual desires mm -hmm. but i do understand your point on uh, control so on this side we have a new face who you might not have seen from early and dilo is a bit late but she's here nonetheless an activist you've got something to say to me you're dealing particularly with vulnerable groups we're talking here commercial sex workers people from the lgbtqi community tell us what your experience is i totally disagree with how you have to you bring in the narrative around control knowing that we live in an in a society where power dynamics are very much pervasive power dynamics that also make those choices on behalf of other people and therefore also remove the agency of especially adolescent girls young women and gender non-conforming people so really we also need to talk about the issues around consent here let me let me ask a question to you Ndilo, because uh, you missed the stories earlier from by grace who got pregnant when she was 14 and amore who was 17. Is it possible for them to have provided consent at that young age and for Amore who was depending financially entirely on her boyfriend? So according to our Combating of Rape Act of, 2000 and, and of 2013, I think, the, uh, the law currently says if you are 14 years and younger, you cannot consent to sex. That's statutory rape. And if the person is, is, is 14 years and 3 years older, that also you cannot consent. But again, we are talking about adolescence here. So there is no way that the person could have consented even if they, they did say yes and, and this and that. Because we are looking at power dynamics. So we, men, we cannot have that, that conversation around consent, consent without talking about the existing power dynamics. Okay, great. All right, so I want to come back to these two ladies. Uh, because I know one of the things that's associated with teen pregnancies, at least where I'm from in Kenya, is shame. A feeling like you did something completely wrong. Did, this, did, did it feel like that for you? Because you stayed in school until you were eight months pregnant, yeah? How did that go? Um, yes, shame from like thinking what will the people say, what will the teachers say, what will people at church say. It did also um, <coughs> affect you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with that? Because it's not an easy situation to be in. Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. I had my parents, number one, who were encouraging me not to worry about what other people said and my life skills teacher. Yeah. So you had a support system around mm -hmm. you. Let me ask you a personal question. Have you grown up in the church? Yes, I did. And did you feel like at that point you could go to your pastor or your youth leader and talk to them about what was going on? Not really. <laughs> I was ashamed that maybe they would 
like someone that grew up in the church how you you have been, how can you fall pregnant and yeah so yeah but you're back in school now yes, yeah I am. um amore you haven't been able to come back to school you're working in a tuck shop at the moment yes. so did you have to drop out immediately you got pregnant or what happened no i went to school until i was 8 months pregnant mm -hmm. yeah i i mean yeah 8 months and then like my water broke at school your water broke when you were in school. Yes. Can you talk to me through that experience? I mean, that must have, I can't imagine. Were you in class? Were you no, out in the field we were, playing? we were rotating. Yeah, we were like, you know, changing glasses most. Yeah, and yeah. then the water broke. Okay, so Frida, let me come back to you. Because back to the conversation about shame and what Simpson said earlier about what the expectations of the church are, what the expectations of culture are. Don't you feel like they rob these girls who are already in vulnerable situations of the little resources that they might help, that they might have in terms of support? I personally feel like, or from personal experiences that I've, or with the people that I've had to deal with who got pregnant at early ages, they were, most of them were shunned from the church, but not because they were told that don't come to the church, it's just by the looks of it. And because of these things, these uh, women fall into depression, and sometimes it, it, it becomes so bad that they don't go to school anymore, or they just literally shut down and become depressed. And I personally feel like their bodies are really not fit. At 14, your body is not fit to, to carry to term. Mm. You should be given the option of no, if you want to have an abortion. Not even if you want to, you should have an abortion because very much you're young. But isn't it, what, what does the, the country's constitution say about the legality or illegality of abortions here? <sighs> Only under three conditions, if I'm speaking under correction, four conditions. Yes, contextually, under the law, abortion is legal. So, but legal only under very, uh, very restrictive conditions. Outside of that, it's criminalized, which means that if you do go for backdoor abortion, you will be arrested when you'll be fined 5,000 or five years imprisonment or both. Now, current, coming to the current steps of abortion, to obtain an abortion, if under the case of rape or incest, you need two medical practitioners, and those practitioners must be performing in the Namibia State Hospital and then you need a third doctor that would perform the abortion so these two doctors they only issue the certificate not the performance itself if it's under also rape or incest you need a certificate from a magistrate and you need to provide a good enough reason for why you did not for example report a rape, a rape case if you are a minor or under under age you need either written consent from the Minister of Gender you, or from the Children's Court or from a parental or guardian and then also abortion can only be performed in a state hospital so I'm I'm guessing, Immaculate, that given what we've just heard, that the number of unsafe abortions is probably on the rise, just as teen pregnancies are. Yes, and, and it, it is difficult to get access to statistics because of the illegality or the criminalization in the event. We, we, I'm, I'm at the university. We hear a lot of stories about a, a pill that is in the market mm. that girls can access. We hear uh, stories of women or young girls who bleed them themselves almost to death because these pills need to be drank in either two sequences or three sequences. You drink one today and after three days you drink another one. And if you don't have the money for the next one, you are likely to, to, to just not survive it. It is, a, it is really a horrendous story. It's the issue of finding a way to liberalize abortion in Namibia is a matter that needs the urgent of all the attention okay. that, 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 that we need to put I'm on. curious to hear from Simpson what his views are. Alfred, I'll come back to you in just a second. Uh, we have the ladies there who are saying that abortion should definitely be an option on the table, particularly for seriously young mothers. The church is very clear on this. It forbids it. Mm -hmm. Is there no middle ground whatsoever? I don't think there is a middle ground simply because uh, this child. So if, if uh, let me ask a different question. If the uh, abortion law was to be changed and made more direct, how how would you feel about it? Uh, it wouldn't have been a good thing because uh, I don't think uh, we as human beings have the right uh, uh, to take life. I mean, at the end of the day, we should support the mother in terms of going through this process, uh, uh, giving the necessary. Uh, uh, guidelines that she needs to get and then if she's in in school get her back um, when she's done giving birth get her back to school so that at All the right. end of the day she can be have a career and be a, a, a responsible mother okay Frida you had something to say to me earlier please go ahead 
Um, I just wanted to add on to what Ms. Immaculate said, the, the fact that um, as much as um, we want to not legalize abortion fully, it is happening. And as much as these people are buying, uh, or let me say women are buying tablets on the black market, so to say, they are also doing um, home remedies because they cannot afford these things. And these are things that are happening that lead to fatalities of women dying. And I personally feel like women should be given the choice because um, Simpson said we should let women carry to term. But do we actually ask these women what emotionally what have you gone through carrying this baby to term? Mm. Uh, you asked an important question, which I want to ask uh, by Grace. The emotional toll that it takes on you to carry a baby when you're 14 and not really being ready to. How was that emotionally, what Frida was talking about? The thing that really um, maybe um, affected me mostly emotionally was like um, comments from the people maybe. That's what, yeah, that's what made me going to school like I sometimes I felt like I don't want to go to school and yeah or go to church even to be honest like currently since I gave birth I did not really go back to church because I felt like it was like a shame to the people like yeah they'd maybe look at me in a way of like I, I've sinned or yeah yeah what mm -hmm. are some of the comments that people used to say to you like by grace the innocent one how did you fall pregnant and yeah yeah. And because also my parents are like religious people. So people were like, um, your parents are religious people. How did that happen? Like, how did you fall pregnant? People who call themselves um, Christians, their, chil their, her, like their, chil their child is pregnant. And yeah. yeah. Wow. So they were shaming not just you, but also your parents. Yes. Tell me about your life since you gave birth. Um, okay, my parents have actually been supportive and they... Um, Offer to they hired a nanny, so when I go to school, she takes care. After school, she stays um, until maybe five, so I can maybe rest, do a few homeworks, and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, immaculate. Obviously, not everybody will have the luxury of having their parents get a nanny for them or the ability to even go back to school. So, what are some of the long-term consequences of teen pregnancies, total even dropout. within the community? It's total dropout, and we heard from these two young panelists that are here that for for both of them, there was a time that their partners had actually said, "You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not part of it." And for for majority of young girls, they get they get caught into that system where the partner just want nothing to do with the pregnancy and parents also have a tendency to continue ostracizing them by putting punitive measures on these young girls. Yeah. So school dropout is, is really, for most girls, the, the only yeah. alternative. And I also read that, incidentally, people who are teen mothers are more likely to raise children who will themselves become teen parents. Yes, it becomes um, a so let's now look at the solutions, because this is a problem that is faced, surely, around the globe, but particularly in Africa. And I'm very curious to know from Simpson, because the church obviously has a very hardened position and abstinence is not going to work. I'm sorry, it just won't. Yeah. Um, the, one of the solutions that we can look at is let us stand together as a nation. As we say that we are a 90% Christian nation, let us stand together and when these kind of things happen, let us not shun them but support them. Okay, yes. and speak openly as we are, yeah. I suppose. Uh, okay, let's hear from Frida. What do we do so that um, in the next 10, 20 years, we don't have another 10, 20,000 by graces? I, I personally would say let's legalize abortion, but you can be for abortion or you can be pro-abortion, but not take part in it. It's a conversation we need to cater for everybody that needs, because everybody needs to be happy in the end. But what about uh, 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 rape victims? Even these rape, like Ndilo mentioned earlier on, these rape, rape victims need to get consent from two physicians and another third doctor to actually just terminate these pregnancies. Why can't we just make it free? Because in the end, if you don't support abortion, it's fine. You, you, you don't have to uh, uh, encourage people to have an abortion, but give other people the choice to make that for themselves. All right, fantastic. Let's hear from West. Some solutions, very quickly, please. The I solution really to is get there. education uh -huh. of sex. Education, sex education, sex comprehensive education. sex education. Yes. Fantastic. Immaculate, very quickly, please. A lot has been said, but you know what? I, I always really believe that um, there are worst-case scenarios where 
pregnancy takes place because of rape or incest. But then there are also cases where, where we really need to bring back the joy, the fun, the beauty of sex back into the platform. Oh, so that like sex that. can no longer be destigmatized. <laughs> Bring it back so that the, the, those youngsters who want to engage sexually can, can apply their minds and, and know that I, I know whatever that is there to, to know. Let's bring back okay, the uh, we're just wrapping up this debate and I want to hear from the two ladies here. I'm sure there are some teen moms who will be looking at you right now, looking for advice, or some young women who might be wanting to hear from you. Yeah, Amore, go on. Mm -hmm. I would prefer that girls take contraceptives. Yeah, yeah, at all time. Yeah. But sometimes ne, contraceptive is out of stock. That's even one thing. Always it's not there. When you go follow up, it's not there. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like that. By Grace? Even though your, um, maybe your parent doesn't come to you to have like a sex conversation, maybe try to go to them and <laughs> talk about it. And secondly, also try to use contraceptives. And um, yeah, I'm not encouraged, I'm, I'm not saying you should fall pregnant, but um, if you do end up fall pregnant, it's not the end of the world. Okay, I, I really like that. That's actually a really positive note to end on. It's not the end of the world if you do become a teen mother. Uh, but most importantly, going back to what people were saying, education is key and making sure that these conversations are happening out in the open. As usual, thank you so much for watching.